Hey, I'm Dale, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to mask uh, images together. Being able to mask images together is a really cool way of getting bits of different images and bits and pieces within those images that you like, and then combining them together to create something that compositionally looks better and is kind of more dramatic, uh, especially in this case. So let's jump into it. So I'll show you the three images that I've got. Here we go, let's bring them up in Lightroom. Here we go. So the left image we're gonna use as the, um, as the sky. The reason why I'm gonna use it as the sky is because uh, both the two, two images on the right hand side, the sky is completely blown out because of the um, kind of shutter speed that I was using and a whole bunch of other settings. Anyway, we're gonna use the left one for the sky. We're gonna use the middle one for the middle ground uh, kind of section there. And then something that was missing in that image there was the foreground. So we're gonna get the foreground from the right image and then kind of blend it in with that one. Okay, let's jump into it. So let's select all of those images, right click on them and go edit in open as layers in Photoshop. Now, uh, these three images were taken on a tripod. Being able to take it on a tripod uh, is awesome because it means masking is gonna be a lot easier. There's no kind of alignment of anything. Anyway, so Photoshop's gonna open up. It's gonna get all the layers in and it's gonna stack them on top of each other. So first things first, we're going to rename them. So that's the sky. This here we're gonna call We'll call that the base layer. The reason why it's the base layer is uh, we're gonna put it at the bottom. So let's drag and put that layer at the bottom. This uh, image here is for the foreground. So let's call that foreground. You can call them whatever you want, but uh, I find this helps. And we're gonna jump into it. So first things first, we're gonna add a layer mask, which is this little icon down here. It's gonna create this chain link thing and to the right hand side, it'll create another box. Essentially, this is a, uh, a mask of the image. It physically either hides bits of the image or uh, shows bits of the image. And in this case, the way that it works is white reveals, black conceals. The image at the moment that we've selected is there and available because we've got white. If I go command or con uh, yeah, if I go command or control I, it'll invert that kind of box to the right hand side and it'll absolutely hide everything. So we're gonna use that to our advantage because you can use the brush tool to start masking in or kind of bringing in bits of that image. So we're gonna make sure that's black. So command or control I, if it's not, you can kind of toggle between the two, make sure it's selected for brush and um, we're going to use the right or the left bracket to make the brush big there we go so we're going to make it big on the left hand side here you'll see black and white and these are kind of the opposite colors um, that kind of help you start doing that mask so if we've got if I press X it'll switch between it the one on the top is the primary and we're working with something that's black. So we're working with something that's black um, that is, it's existing. And then we're gonna use the white or the opposite of that to start masking it back in. So white, we're gonna make sure the opacity is at 100%. Then we're just gonna click and bang, done. Just bringing in that foreground area there. Easy. So that's that. We're going to jump onto the uh, sky layer. Let's just show you first. So that's with, that's without, that's with, that's without. Uh, okay, let's bring in the sky layer. Same as before, clicking on the mask. Uh, white reveals black conceals. At the moment, it's white because it's showing everything. If we go Command or Control I, that'll hide it. B for brush, same as before. Make sure the opacity is at 100%. Make sure that the color that's selected here, you can use the X again, is the opposite of what's on that mask. In this case, it's the white. And we're just gonna click. And we're just gonna bring it in like that. 
And just as we we're about to get to the horizon line, we stop. And the reason why we're going to stop is we're going to go in and do a little bit more fine adjustments. So command or control and then the plus or minus will get you in. Kind of zoom in, zoom out. H for hand, lets you kind of drag around the canvas. B for brush again. And then we're going to use the brackets to make it a little smaller. Uh, and in this case, we're going to get the opacity not at 100%. We're going to put it down to maybe 40% thereabouts. And then I'm just going to bring in the horizon. So I'm bringing the horizon from the, um, the darker picture there um, because in my opinion, it's going to make the image work a lot nicer um, just because your eye focuses on the brightest part of the images. In this case, we want the bright part of the image to be the foreground kind of going in and then finishing where the sun is there. So anything we can do to kind of help add to that composition, including bringing in some dark um, near the horizon line is good. So we're just gonna go over the sun there. And as we go over the sun, um, I'm gonna put the opacity up a little bit more. You'll start seeing the detail that comes back in with that there. So you may get some haloing which is what's going on just here. And that's where the image below isn't completely aligned with the image above, but that is okay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bring the opacity down a little bit more. And then we're just going to go in. And what's cool about masks is if at any point you mess up, you just go X and it'll do the opposite. There we go, so that's fine. H, and I'm just moving along. Whoop, don't know what I did there, but I'm just going in again, B for brush. Capacity, let's put that up a little bit more. And then bringing in that a little bit more. <clears throat> there we go. So on this right hand side, it's a little bit more complicated because there are the rocks and stuff kind of sitting up above the horizon line. <clears throat> so in this case, we're gonna use a quick selection um, to select those rocks there or the space above the rocks. And then we're gonna mask it out pretty easily. So those rocks are part of the base layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the base layer up the top here, we're gonna go quick selection. Now, if it doesn't appear there, you can hold down and it might be object selection or, or something like that. But if you hold down and then click on that, similar to the brush, you can make it bigger or smaller depending on the, um, on the brackets. Mm -hmm. And then we're just gonna click over it and then let go and Photoshop's doing its magic. So what Photoshop's doing is it's selecting the, uh, the contrast, which in this case is the rocks. So we've uh, made that selection based on that layer. Then we're gonna go back up to the sky layer, B for brush, making sure that we've got the right layer selected or the right, um, right thing selected here, which is uh, white in this case. And then we're just gonna click, click over that. Now what this will do as well, because it hasn't made a complete selection, is there will be areas where there's quite a rough line. So we're just gonna go back over that the opacity, I'm gonna go down a little bit more. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. Same thing. Just going over that there. Now, for the more advanced people, uh, yes, you can use luminosity masks. Um, so luminosity masks are awesome and great. This is kind of a rough and ready, just quick way of, of doing it. Um, oh, with the haloing here that's going on, I'm just going through and just bringing back in some of those edges um, from the image below, just using the X to kind of toggle between and then just making sure that I've got what I, wanna, what I want based on the side. Anyway, yep, so luminosity masks, yes, you can use those. Uh, the reality of some of these things is... Um, if you can do it by hand, it's usually quicker, especially for stuff like this. Uh, 
as well as that, um, if you're doing it in the foreground, people probably won't notice, uh, especially if um, if you're using um, something like this that's on a tripod. They probably will if it's kind of out of whack a little bit. That sky layer was out of whack and you can just see a little bit of haloing going on here. However, when you zoom out, you don't notice that at all. Anyway, there we go. So just a recap of what we've done. We've got the three images. We've used one as a base layer. So we've used um, the one with the kind of section that we're using in the middle there. We've gotten the foreground and we've uh, kind of masked in the foreground there using the layer masks, which is black conceals, white reveals. So you can see here, we've got black because all this section here is hidden from that image um, and white which is the area that we've just used. Um, let's just show you if I toggle that there, all that's done. There we go. And then we've brought in the sky, um, kind of enabling us to get a little bit more dynamic range in the image. So if I toggle those ones there, you can see it's just brought in the sky. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, all those good things. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.